Shalom friends, welcome to Jewish Holiday Reactions, Judith. In addition to the Maccabees, Hanukkah is a great time to talk about other Jewish badasses. After all, this is the festival of fights we're talking about here. It's thematically appropriate to quote Lizzo, it's bad bitch o'clock. So of course, the story I'm going to tell today is about the woman who takes up the majority of the space on my vision board, Yehudit, Judith. Yehudit was a beautiful and financially independent widow living in a Judean city. Unfortunately, the city was being besieged by a massive army led by Assyrian general Holofernes. Holofernes had had both the water and the internet cut. They had no food. Everyone's demise was imminent and thus they were quite understandably, I think, freaking the fuck out. But not Yehudit because she operated on a totally different level. She possessed an unstoppable combo of attributes, intelligence, bravery, extreme hotness, and access to cheese. So she says to everybody, don't worry, I have a plan. I'm gonna do something so baller, it'll be remembered down the generations of our people. Just you wait and see. She gets dressed up in her most jaw-dropping outfit. She puts on her jewelry. And most importantly, she draws a cat eye sharp enough to unalive a man. Under the cover of darkness, Yehudit and her maid leave the city and walk straight into the enemy camp. Yehudit pretends she's decided to flip on the Judeans. She says to Holofernes, well, obviously I wanted to side with you. You're clearly going to win this. I want to be on the smart side of history. He is so obsessed with her and immediately invites her back into his tent. Now, Yehudit and her maid had packed some strategic foods and beverages in their picnic basket to help them run this honey trap. Holofernes is like, oh my God, not only is she a snack, she's brought me snacks. She's serving both wine and looks. He was thirsty for Yehudit, but also thirsty because the cheese was really salty. So he grabs the wine and chugs it. Then he feels a little dizzy and needs to lie down. He passes out on the bed. Everything was going just as Judith had planned. She stands over Holofernes. She reaches over to his scabbard and pulls out his own sword. And then Holofernes gets the Ned Stark treatment. His cranium rolls across the carpet. She dribbles it over to the picnic basket and kicks it in. Go! Yehudit and her maid take that basket and they bounce out of that Assyrian camp with alacrity. They get back to the city and when they pull up, you know, it's a shutdown. Yehudit and her maid hold up the grizzly trophy for a little bit of show and tell. But Judith is like, guys, this is just step one. She told them to put the head of Holofernes up on the highest wall where everyone could see it. The Judeans immediately felt a lot better and felt encouraged. Judith had shown them that they could do this. They armed themselves and went to the enemy camp. That morning, the Assyrian camp was all over the place because honestly, they had walked into Holofernes' tent and seen his head divorced from his body. And they panicked. They were like, oh shit, we, we have to nope out of here real quick. Clearly, nobody was better than Yehudit when it came to playing head games. This created an opening so the Jews could launch a successful attack against the Assyrians and defeat them. Throughout the rest of her days, Yehudit was celebrated for the leadership she had shown, the bravery she had demonstrated, and the way she had saved everyone's ass. She, a woman, had defeated the Lord of the Nazgul, the Witch King of Angmar. I mean Holofernes. What an epic legacy. Based on all of these factors, I give Yehudit a perfect score of 10 out of 10. This grade is both for creative problem solving and technical execution.